Welcome, boys and girls. In lesson 6.4 here, our essential question is how can you rewrite fractions using common denominators? What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at two different fractions, and what we're going to do is we're going to write equivalent fractions using common denominators. So if you take a look at these two fractions here, we have one-third and we have two-fifths. What we need to do is we need to find a common denominator for one-third and two-fifths. So what we do when we find a common denominator, what we're doing is we're finding a common multiple of the denominators. To review what multiples are, remember, we know that multiples are... Um, so a multiple is a is the products of a, of a given integer. So for example here, there are multiples of three. I would start out, I would say three, six, nine, twelve, 15, and on and on it goes. Uh, and then what I would do is I take a look at my multiples of the other denominator, which is 5, and I have 5, 10, 15, 20, and again, they could go on and on. But what I could do right now is I could stop because I could see that there is a common multiple. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that common multiple of those denominators and we're going to make that our common denominator. We're going to use 15 as our common denominator. And with that 15, we're going to write equivalent fractions for the one-third and equivalent fraction for the two-fifths using 15 as the common denominator. So what I now want to do is I want to ask myself, okay, one-third is going to be equal to what over 15? Well, I know if my 3 here now becomes a 15 as a denominator. I know that 3 must have been multiplied by 5. And in order for a, a fraction to be equivalent, uh, if you multiply the denominator by 5, then you would have to multiply that numerator by 5. And you would take that 1 times 5, and you would get 5. Therefore, 1 third and 5 fifteenths are now equivalent fractions. Now, 2 fifths and, and, and we have 2 fifths and we have blank over 15. We have to figure out what that missing numerator is. Here, the 5 turned into a 15. It was multiplied by 3. So in order for this to be equivalent fraction, we need to take the numerator and we need to also multiply that by 3. And we have 2 times 3 and we get 6 fifteenths. So that means 2 fifths and 6 fifteenths are the same exact amount. So what we did with the 1 third and the 2 fifths was we found the common denominator, which was 15, and we made our equivalent fractions. We rewrote those fractions using the common denominator. So now let's take a look at these two fractions. We have 4 ninths and we have 2 thirds. So what we want to do is we want to find a common denominator for the 9 and the 3. And again, once again, a common denominator is the same thing as a common multiple, except we're going to use that common multiple of the denominators to, to make equivalent fractions. So what I would do here, uh, and it could be done mentally as well, I would need to think of the common multiples, or I should say the multiples, of one of the denominators. We'll start with 3. So if I was writing my multiples of 3, I could start out and I could write my first few multiples of 3, and I have them listed here. Now I go on to my other denominator, which is 9. I have a few multiples of 9 written out here. Uh, and, and what I could do is I, I recognize right here that uh, 9 is a common multiple. 9 is actually the least common multiple of those two. So we're going to use that 9 to make equivalent fractions to the four-ninths and the two-thirds. So since we're going to be using nine here as the common denominator, what we need to do is we need to figure out what the equivalent fraction would be for each one of these. Well, the four-ninths here, uh, if we have four-ninths equaling blank over nine, a missing number over nine, missing numerator, uh, well, we know that nine times one is going to equal that 9. Therefore, we have to multiply the top by 1, and you would get 4 ninths. So uh, the 4 ninths is going to stay the same. It's going to stay the same as 4 ninths. But now here, the 3, we know times the 3 equals a 9. Therefore, in order for it to be equivalent, we have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well, and we would get 6 ninths. Therefore, we have 2 thirds equals 6 ninths, 
4 ninths obviously equals 4 ninths. Therefore, what we did with these two fractions is we took uh, a common denominator, which was 9, and we made equivalent fractions for those, for those fractions. Now, even though in this lesson 6.4, we're not actually adding two fractions, what I want to do is I want to show you this one last example so you understand why we're actually doing this. Because now we have a fraction of 3 fourths and 1 sixth, and what we need to do is we need to add these two fractions together. But the problem is these two fractions don't have the same denominator. We know from the past when we have uh, fractions that have the same denominator, uh, and we either add or subtract them, it's, it's fairly simple. We take one-fifth and we have two-fifths. We know the answer would be three-fifths. But it doesn't work the same when we have two fractions with different denominators. But using the skill that we just went over, we could take these two fractions, uh, make fractions, make equivalent fractions that have the same denominator. And then once we create those equivalent fractions that have the same denominator, we can add or subtract them together. In this case, we'll be adding them together. So what we first need to do is we need to figure out a common denominator for the 4 and for the 6. Um, what we could do is we could either take this 4 and 6 and multiply them together and get 24 and use that as the common denominator, uh, or we could uh, find the least common denominator, which would be 12, because 12 is a multiple of 4, and it's also a multiple of 6. So what I'm going to do with that 12, which that, with that least common denominator, I'm going to write equivalent fractions to 3 fourths and an equivalent fraction to 1 6, and they're both going to have 12 as their denominator. So I know that the 4 times the 3 gets me that 12, Therefore, I'm going to take the numerator and also multiply that by 3, and I'm going to get 9. So now my 3 fourths is equaling 9 twelfths. Now over on this side with the 1 6, I'm going to take uh, my 1 6. I know, one, I know 6 times 2 gets me this 12. Therefore, if I multiply the numerator here by 2 in order to make it equivalent, I get 2 twelfths. So really, 1 6 is equal to 2 twelfths. So now, if 3 fourths and 9 twelfths equal the same amount, 1 6 and 2 twelfths equals the same amount, all I would have to do is, now that they have the same denominator, all I would have to do here is take the numerators of 9 twelfths and 2 twelfths and add them together. And what I would get is I would get a sum of 11 twelfths. Therefore, 3 fourths plus 1 six equals 11 twelfths. So that's why we are, are, are using the skill of, of rewriting fractions using these common denominators.